so the interceptor 650 long term review after a year So what's up YouTube, welcome to my channel, Complete Tech Review and uh, welcome to another vlog. In this vlog I'm going to talk about the ownership review of the Interceptor 650. It's been a year and I thought let's do the ownership review of my second hand Interceptor, Interceptor 650. So that is what you're going to check out in this channel. So stay tuned and uh, this particular footage I'm shooting it from the DJI Osmo Pocket. So uh, this one is my baby interceptor which is a 650cc second hand almost done 5500 kilometers and uh, this is my ownership review after a year so what all that i have uh, you know felt good about this bike and also what all that i didn't like about this bike all is what is covered in this video so do check out till the end and by the way the interceptor second hand i picked it up for a very good deal around 1.6 lakhs again this was in the family and i picked it up from a known person hence i got it at that cost but usually you don't get it at this cost uh, this one is the 2020 model and uh, just uh, was roughly done around 800 kilometers hence i got a very very good deal so let's start with the positives certainly the bikes looks very vintage and very classic uh, and especially this burgundy color uh, I in fact the initial owner has taken has paid 7,000 rupees more just for this color so hence the color and also the classic looks makes it look you know fabulous and uh, makes it look stand apart from the rest of the competition so that is the first thing even now it's a head turner with the uh, black uh, alloy trims sorry black rims and also the classic look which is very minimalistic in its nature like for example the round headlight and uh, the uh, tank which is a long and extended tank and with a flat seat so the looks first scores it and uh, yeah even now it's a uh, crowd seeker so that's something which is the first positive about this bike second one is certainly the engine yes this is a 650 cc engine which delivers roughly around 47 bhp of power so this one delivers roughly around 47 bhp of power and it is fuel injected and comes with twin spark plug it's a parallel twin engine and that is the beauty of this engine it is made it to a six speed slipper clutch you know the specifications by this time and i have also put a lot of videos on this bike but the gem of the engine is mainly its torque and also second thing is its refinement this is unlike any royal enfield and hence uh, i would say repeatedly that the engine is really really smooth and it has a fantastic torque especially in the first three gears again you can further uh, you know pull it in the fourth and fifth gear as well but again the torque is really good till the first three gears even the fourth and fifth gears is really nice but for the weight of the vehicle that's where i'm saying that the torque is really good and yeah you get to you know plunge forward at the uh, traffic signal once it goes green mainly because of the engine power that it delivers so that is the second positive the other reason that i would say the third reason is mainly the bike and also it's you know the, the built quality of the bike everything that you touch on this bike is made up of metal even the uh, rear bar and mounts is metal so it has an oil cooler and the uh, radiator grill is metal the double cradle frame is metal 
the shock absorbers front and back everything the casing on that is metal so everything that you touch on this vehicle is metal which makes it long lasting and also it makes it more durable and very very uh, planted on the highway so that is the best third thing very well executed the fourth good thing is the uh, braking the braking on this bike is really phenomenal the uh, main thing the front disc is a very large unit i think this is the largest and it is i believe is 320 mm and the rear also has some very good stopping power so it's dual channel abs and does the duty and stops this heavy and a powerful bike in a dime so which is really nice the last positive that i want to talk about this vehicle is going to be its cost and the service so for a 650 you can't ask more so for a 650 vehicle you're getting it roughly around 3.4 lakhs to around 3.5 lakhs so you get a lot of bike for that money and um, yeah it has all the necessary bits it's not very technologically advanced vehicle but it has all the necessary bits for your long tours and also for your city tours so like the essentials being like the uh, powerful engine it has um, a slipper clutch it has dual channel abs the suspension is nitrox adjustable you have a very comfortable seat uh, roughly 12 liter fuel tank and all the bits on this vehicle is really nice so you get everything uh, at a very affordable price and there's no other competition for this it's like a dominance in the market for a 650 you are actually paying very less so that is one best thing that about about all and finance second thing is about the service the service cost which i incurred is was not more than uh, 2000 uh, 500 and uh, in that service they did the general service and that was um, mainly to check the fuel the uh, you know the carburetor and also the fuel injection system and also the general service and cleaning part of it so that was done and for 2500 i don't think that is much and it is mostly a yearly service so that is something which is there I also did a separate video where I did the service from Go Bumper Go Mechanics uh, two wheeler branch and in that um, video I've told that the service cost further reduced for me uh, and uh, where I purchased the oil and then they did the service and that service cost costed me around 1100 bucks do check out that video for a detailed review of uh, how is Go Bumper service for a 650 cc so thus those were the, the positives of the vehicle so now coming to the cons so coming to the cons i think the first one that i would uh, talk about is the fuel efficiency yes uh, the fuel efficiency for especially for a 650 cc you can't ask for more but i feel that uh, considering the fuel cost and uh, also the smaller tank the fuel efficiency could have uh, been improved uh, mainly for this vehicle i am getting roughly around 25 to around 30 uh, kilometers per liter and that is uh, if i am really revving the vehicle and uh, maintaining a, an average speed which is above 100 so uh, that's where i am getting a fuel efficiency which is not that great uh, which makes you only to have multiple fuel stops when you are on a long ride but if you keep the vehicle at a speed which is less than 100 then uh, certainly you can get a mileage which is upwards around 35 so which is something which i have experienced it in the city so but you have to keep it you know under 100 uh, kilometers per hour so that's i think the first con there are several factors adding to it again speed second thing is the uh, weight of the vehicle third thing is its power so if you are naturally uh, you know acclaimed or you are not naturally uh, inclined to rev this vehicle because uh, of its power and torque and uh, yeah on the highways if you are about 
100 and in fact about 110 the fuel efficiency drastically reduces so that's con number one con number two is the lack of tubeless tires yes this aesthetically looks good the rim uh, the rims which is uh, not alloys it looks good aesthetically but on uh, long runs where you are going on a bad patch of road like for example this one uh, where you don't have a road so in this uh, situation you have to be extra careful that you are you know not taking this vehicle uh, more towards uh, any place where you're out of reach from a puncture mechanic because this vehicle has no tubeless tires and uh, so unlike the other Royal Enfields you get an option to put the uh, alloy wheels for the interceptor the alloy wheels are still not there there are aftermarket alloy wheels but which are not from the brand so taking chance for that is again as per your own risk but being a 650 and being a heavy vehicle, I think it's high time that Royal Enfield introduces the alloy version for this or also at least give an option to have alloy wheels, thereby having tubeless tires mounted to those. So that I feel is another worrisome thing because you can't take it to places where you don't have a proper road and uh, that will always be in the mind that once if a puncture happens, then God uh, help you because to drag this vehicle it's highly impossible and second thing is you have to ensure that you have a proper mechanic nearby and the final con being the seat yes again aesthetically it looks good but the seat is really you know on the harder side for long rides it doesn't you know does the job uh, it doesn't do the job properly the uh, seat again when it you know it uh, moves to the tank it narrows down and uh, the uh, width of the seat is also not much so I think Royal Enfield, Royal Enfield could have given uh, the uh, you know the classic 350c seat which is a split and a very broad and comfortable seat that could have been better but again it will maybe spoil the uh, you know the aesthetic looks of the vehicle but again seat is one of the con and hence in my other video I have put a bubble seat on this and uh, yeah that does the job in minimizing your butt aches so that was my ownership review of my baby interceptor and um, I've told you the pros and cons and after a year what did I experience especially for a second hand interceptor so I hope you enjoy this video. If you do so, please like and subscribe to the channel. There's more interesting content on your way. And uh, if you end up liking such content, please do help creators like me by subscribing and also hitting the bell icon and also showing your love through comments. It'll be really nice if I meet the 50K mark by end of this year. That is what the target that I have kept. And uh, your help and support will certainly help. So... That's it from my side and uh, I hope I would uh, get more videos on the Interceptor quite soon and uh, yeah and see you in the next one. Bye bye.